Hi there, welcome to my views and news. Three news stories. Firstly, was Gondar Fano has released a statement. Its message for Kimant people, Kimant militias. What is this message about? Uh, why was the need for the release of this message? Is government trying to pit Kimant against uh, Maharas? Secondly, uh, Russia has stepped in the conflict in Sudan. Reportedly, first arms deliveries from Russia have arrived in Sudan. Thirdly, Somali land. Interesting revelation by a US MP about uh, huge lithium reserves in Somali land. Let's start from Ethiopia, Amhara region, where Gondar Fano today released a statement. Uh, the addressee of the statement is Kemat. Kemat people live in Kemat Aragos, basically. They live in Amhara region, in Boghembra zone, Agowavi zone, near Gondar. And uh, in the past, uh, PPL was accused of arming, financing Kimats against Amharas. But now there is no TPLF, obviously, in power in Addis Ababa. But uh, still, uh, Kimats Agos are not supporting Fano groups. Fano groups have been trying to enter Agoavi zone. They have been carrying out attacks. I think two days ago, they entered the Lily. Uh, but we could not see any alliance between Fano and Ago, Fano and Kemat. Today, Gondar Fano released a statement because most of the Kemans are in Gondar or in Waghemra. Gondar Fano says that Kemans and Amharas have same culture, history, uh, etc., language. That is why they should not the, be. The victims of uh, government propaganda. Government is arming, reportedly, government is arming Agos, Kemans, to pit Kemans against uh, Amhara fighters. The two should uh, join hands. They should not allow themselves to be used against each other. Today's message seems to be a message of uh, solidarity. An offer from Fano to Kimat that let's fight together against the Ethiopian forces. How will Ago Kimat community respond to it? I don't see any alliance coming between them. I think this alliance, Fano should have uh, worked for this alliance before the start of uprising in the Maha region. In the last uh, one year or so, Fano fighters entered Ago Avi zone dozens of times. They attacked government officials here. Obviously, they attacked uh, people uh, from Kemat group, from Ago group, who, who were part of the government. So now there is no real likelihood of any alliance between Kemats and Agos, Kemats and Amharas. But let's see. Uh, Gondar Fano. So far, is not internally united. North Gondar, South Gondar Fano still separately operating. Uh, Shoa Fano was in talks a few days ago. Asagad McKinnon and Makatao met. We know what happened then. Shoa and Gondar Fano are not united. How can they form alliance with a third party if there is no internal unity? Today, statement indicates that Gondar Fano wants to be on good terms with Kemet. They want Kemant and Ago either to support Fanos or that Kemant and Ago should not fight against uh, Amharas. Problem is, how can Kemant and Ago just distance themselves from this uh, conflict? Because Ago Avi zone is the zone where they are in good number and Fano fighters. Uh, they have been building their bases, their camps close to Ago Avi zone, and they want to pass through this zone to enter Benishangal Gumu region. To, and they'll have to talk. 
and they'll have to agree on something that this the, the, this this is the agreement which will be uh, uh, followed by the two parties just issuing a state statements won't uh, serve any purpose the two will have to sit and then they'll have to agree on terms and condition writing though it's not uh, very likely by the way secondly viewers uh, russia has officially stepped in in sudanese civil war it's, it seems because sudanese news sources are reporting that first uh, arms shipments arrived from russia in Port Sudan today. Port Sudan is the city where Al Burhan government is based now. The Burhan government was based in Khartoum, but obviously it had to uh, shift the government headquarters from Khartoum because Khartoum largely under RSF control, uh, Bari too. Now, Port Sudan is the center of uh, Al Burhan government. Uh, Military, uh, the the supplies which arrived a uh, few hours ago in Port Sudan are reportedly <clears throat> ammunition uh, for Sikhoi fighter jets. And it is being claimed that in the coming days, the Sikhoi fighter jets will also arrive. By the way, Sudan already uses Russian weaponry. Sudan is one of the major buyers of Russian weaponry in this area. But these deliveries, new deliveries, are linked to the new deal which is being negotiated by the two parties. Russia wants a naval base in Sudan. Uh, Malik Agar, uh, Sudanese deputy uh, chairman of Sovereignty Council, visited Russia. Uh, I think it was a two or three day visit. Uh, he has returned from Russia. And after that, these arms deliveries arrived in Sudan. Russia is now officially stepping in, it seems. Officially means that confirmation is made by some Sudanese sources. It means that war in Sudan is set to go on. Americans want some sort of ceasefire. Americans and Saudis have been mediating talks uh, between the two sides. They Uh, wanted the parties to agree on humanitarian ceasefire, but the intervention of Russia uh, indicates that the war is now set to go on. Let's see. Lastly, we heard Somali land has reserves of very precious metal, which could be which could attract foreign powers, global powers. Here, it was mentioned by a U.S. lawmaker. Uh, during a speech at the parliament in US. He said that uh, uh, Swaziland has huge reserves of lithium. Lithium is used by modern uh, tech industry, uh, by industry in other uh, types of industries as well. And the American lawmaker claimed that uh, Chinese were against uh, Taiwan Somali land cooperation because Taiwan could gain access to lithium reserves in Somali land and it would boost Taiwan's economy. So, if if Americans know about the lithium reserves, it means obviously Chinese know that as well. Russians too. Horn of Africa now it 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 has been. The center of uh, fight for dominance among global powers. Americans here, Russians intervening too, they're deploying their naval assets and they want to have the backing of neighboring countries for the deployment of their navy here. They want a naval base either in Eritrea or in Sudan. Western countries are here too as well. Uh, and not just naval presence, they want to have presence in the countries as well, bordering the Red Sea. Somali uh, land has gained prominence. Its case for recognition has gained prominence because of its MOU with Ethiopia. That is why I say that if Ethiopia recognizes Somali land as a country, Ethiopia wouldn't be the only country. You'll see other countries follow as well. And that is why Somalia wants to stop the implementation of MOU, no matter what happens. So coming, 
weeks and months crucial let's see uh, I, did, i did a video a few hours ago about katri mediation a new development that are mediating between somalia and ethiopia thank you much